Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a paralysed man, lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Remembering that the Word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of Scripture. Today's reflection is offered by James Scott, our ordinand on placement. What is your greatest power? Are you a good listener? Are you someone who can move people with your voice? Are you the trustworthy sort of person that people can come to for help? What do you think are the greatest abilities that you've been given? And in a world which is so caught up in a view of power as who has authority over whom, how can you use the powers that you've been given for the betterment of your community and the whole of society. Our Gospel today highlights one of the greatest powers that we share with all creation, that is, the power of speech. In a world where people find themselves unable to cry out against injustice, we use our voices. For the people that cannot find a voice to pray, we pray for them. We pray on behalf of them. For those who are in the midst of emotional turmoil and distress, that quiet voice walking alongside them can do the world of good. The power of our speech is grounded in our words which themselves hold a power of their own. Our words have the power to heal and to hurt, to calm 
and to please, and so much more. For some, words can hold certain powers, say for example an officer of the law. You are under arrest. Four simple words that if I were to say them, mean nothing. But for an officer to say them, they suddenly have the power to bind, to hold a person over. Indeed, even the words of members of parliament can bind the whole country to a set of circumstances required for the cessation of the pandemic. If these are the powers that our words hold, how much more do the words of Jesus hold? In Genesis, God spoke into the beginning of creation, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there be, and so on and so forth. And it was so. Whatever God says, it is done. A pattern we see across the Old Testament and coming into the New Testament. At Christmas, we celebrate that word of God, that word which spoke into the beginning the word which transforms and empowers, becoming flesh in Jesus. That same power is still at work in him in today's gospel. Thus, Jesus can say, your sins are forgiven. And by God and the power of the words alive in him, they are forgiven. That same word can call Lazarus to life from out of the tomb, and it is so. That same word can say, receive the Holy Spirit to those first disciples and to the church today, and it is given to them and to us. It's the blindness of the world around Jesus to that power that our gospel picks up on. The scribes are once again trying to pick fault with Jesus, trying to get him to say something he shouldn't, but they cannot. Every time Jesus does speak, his words transform the reality around him. So the crowds, those of the scribes, those who follow along behind him, have no choice but to be amazed and to acknowledge the power of God which is truly alive and truly active in him. So where have we seen the power of God today? Where have we seen the Spirit of God working in our own lives and transforming the reality around us? Has it been how we've imagined it in our prayers? Or has God answered them in another way that we've yet to recognise? Wherever you are, and whenever you listen to this, may the Spirit infuse the words that God has given to you to build up and to grow his kingdom of justice, love, mercy and peace today in the week ahead and for the rest of our lives amen take a moment press pause if you want to reflect on what if anything struck you during today's reflection were there words of comfort with their words of challenge. And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, you know we long for your healing and forgiveness. May we know your presence and peace with us now. May we understand your truth and be freed by the Spirit to share the good news in all we say and do. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for our world, longing for it to be cleansed of warfare, oppression and greed, for its people to be freed from violence, intolerance and selfishness, for them to learn to live together as one people in your kingdom, united in love and in service. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we bring before you those who need to be made whole by your love, those whose lives are darkened by fear and anxiety, by loss and insecurity, those worn out by the demands being made upon them, those bowed down by loneliness, by grief, by sickness. Be with them, Lord, to comfort, to uphold them and strengthen them with your promise of new life for all. Lord, have mercy. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always, this day and for evermore. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen.